If you saw a Volkswagen Phaeton driving down the street, you might think you just saw a Passat that got stung by a bumblebee and had an allergic reaction because it's big. But these cars are actually crazy. I've wanted to drive one of these for a long time. And by now, I'm sure if you are into Phaetons, you've seen Doug Demiro's video and everybody's video that shows you all the fun, exciting things about it. But, uh, well, we're just gonna go over it again because this thing's awesome. So, for those of you who aren't aware of what the Phaeton is, the Phaeton is built on the Volkswagen D1 platform, which is the same platform that the Bentley Continental GT Flying Spur are built on, and I believe the A8L. I'm not entirely sure on that one. This is the most expensive version of the Phaeton you could buy. This is a 2005 Volkswagen Phaeton W12. It has a six liter, 12 cylinder engine that makes 420 horsepower. <laughs> it's all wheel drive and it's automatic and it is the epitome of luxury, which is weird because it's got a Volkswagen badge on it. And that is why there's only 2,200 of these and they were only sold in the US from 2004 to 2006. Sorry for lighting issues. Ross is the camera guy and he's uh, pointing things out a little late. Thanks, Ross. All right. So in 2005, when this car was new, it was $95,000, which is over 120 grand with inflation considered. $95,000 for a Volkswagen. Now, we showed you the interior a little bit in that intro roll there. And the thing is, it's just crazy. Like, how fancy is a Volkswagen Phaeton? Well, I'll show you how fancy it is. Inside you'll find some ridiculously soft leather. All four seats are heated, cooled, and massaging. All four of them. They have these window shades, which is not something outlandish for a luxury car. Evidently, Volkswagen didn't want any sun getting in anywhere. In fact, that rolls over even further to the back window. Dang, that thing moves quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got every single luxury feature that you could possibly imagine. And the craziest part about these things originally being $95,000 is that you can now get them for less than 10% of that. In fact, this car is on lend from Marvelous Motors in Garden City, Idaho, and he said that they were asking $8,000 for a W12 Phaeton, which is woefully tempting, but uh, let's take it for a ride. We got Ross. I'm gonna try a new tactic here. I haven't done a review in a really long time, and we're gonna do a review. Well, that's not true. I just did one in February with the mod van and the Mustang. So we're gonna take Ross with us and throw the GoPro in the dash and just kind of get some impressions of what it's like to be just super rich in 2005. Give that door a nice gentle close, Ross. Mm. Oof, luxury. All right, before we get started on this drive, how about uh, we Turn our cooled seats on. It's a steamy oh, yeah. one out today. And how about a little massage while we're at it there, Ross? Yeah, yeah. How does... mm. Feels like it's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Something's moving. It's so weird. <laughs> you imagine if you had heated seats and massage seats on a road trip, you're just like, God, it's getting late. I need to relax. And then 30 seconds later, you just... <laughs> just like, oh, oh, oh. Driving your ninety-five thousand dollar Volkswagen into a ditch. Oh, you're gonna shade up? Well, yeah, it's really bright out and hot and all the above. Brought. Oh, oh forerunner gang. Good lord. What are you and then at? give me a dirty ass look like you didn't just shoot out in front of a ninety-five thousand dollar car. <laughs> God, people are relentless. The worst part is that forerunner probably go for more now than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Listen, we don't talk about how much it's worth now. We talk about the fact that this is a ninety-five thousand, hundred twenty thousand dollars car. Hundred and twenty thousand dollars car. I. Oh. Well, that's that's that's. The concrete us. floors. <laughs> hundred and twenty thousand. I mean, what does that get you now? What do you, what do you, what can you get for hundred? Probably quite a bit. A Bentley. Um, well, probably not actually. If there was a Phaeton, you could probably get that. Um. <laughs> Let's see, what does 120 grand get you? Uh, you get a BMW 7 Series, probably a Mercedes S-Class, something along those lines if you want a luxury Audi A8L mm. or a, a RS7. Well, 
I think, a, I think an RS7 is a little bit more, but an RS7 is kind of a different playing field. So you could get all of those like more high-end sports car, luxury than, cars. Than a Volkswagen, but yeah. But then you have Volkswagen. And that's kind of the problem that they had with the Phaeton was that no matter how how it has I just I, there's so many buttons in here so many features that I can't even think of what to say to make an example out of something curb sensors despite it having curb sensors you can't detract from the fact that it has a Volkswagen patch on it the front just looks like an Audi or Passat kind of both actually you know it kind of brings up that question too like how with Kia or Hyundai or I think it's just Kia how they have like the Genesis right and like in today's market where you can get these total badass cars but no one wants to buy them because they have a Kia badge or they right. have a Hyundai well, badge. Yeah even the new like the Genesis G80 is kind of struggling with that I think just because like comparatively if you watch reviews and read about the Genesis cars and stuff people are like this is as good or better than an S-Class or an Audi but people still don't want to buy it even though it's half the cost of an A8L just because they know it's made by Hyundai. So it's got these sensor lights up front that basically tell you they're like parking sensors but when you're getting close to a curb, they'll turn yellow and if you get too close, it'll turn red, it'll start to beep. And there's actually in the back there, uh, in the back there up at the top of the window, there's another set of sensors like that or light sensors lights associated with a sensor uh, for backing up which is cool but I don't want to test it maybe we'll put Ross back there because <laughs> otherwise I don't uh, I don't want to risk it I mean they lit up when um, you try oh, yeah. when you put it in reverse but That's there was true. no yeah let's see if it'll just light up that car's gonna freak out behind me yeah it's green now <laughs> yeah those people are like uh <laughs> what are you doing guy I'm sure if that car got a little closer, oh, could. I forgot my massage seat was on. Kinda... <laughs> what do you think is your favorite feature right now? My favorite? Yeah. It's got to be these cup holders. Yeah, those are fancy. <laughs> I got a clip of that. I like you press the button and they slowly pop up. Yeah. I do like that everything's all slow and classy and luxurious, but me being me would have to say my favorite feature of the car is definitely the engine. Mm. And I think that is kind of what drew me towards the Phaeton in the first place because, like, if we drove by Marvelous Motors and I called them and asked if I could make this video, if it was a V8 Phaeton, I probably wouldn't have called. Really? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Because it's still, it's just a V8. Right. Like, I and mean, it's, it's still a classy, you know, luxury car, but that wasn't the part I was excited about. The part I was excited about was the 12 cylinder Bentley engine that just doesn't have turbos. A 420 horsepower all-wheel drive Volkswagen is pretty exciting. Yeah. Walk with conviction when you're walking, people. Make it look like you know where you want to go. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, because this isn't my car, I'm not going to beat on it, but we can give it a little zest to see what she's about. Oh, she opened it up. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of... That's pretty zesty for a car that weighs like 5,000 pounds. 5,000? Yeah. 420 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. It's faster than the Fiesta ST. It's faster than your GT86. Well, everything is. But. I mean, yeah, but this is also a literal yacht that you can drive <laughs> on the street. I was amazed at how long this car is. Yeah. It's the wheelbase is... I was not expecting that out of a Volkswagen because normally you see like Jettas and yeah, well, because it's a Bentley chassis basically. But I mean, it's at, at platform semantics. Hey, look, Volkswagen brother, it's a 911 turbo. <laughs> <laughs> like if you saw one of these, especially like this one because it's got all the badges taken off the back. And I don't know if that was an option if you could just get them without badges, or maybe it was 04 that came with badges and 05 and 06 they just didn't put anything on them. Because I feel like they steered into the whole stealth wealth thing like RCR talked about in their video. Like, people who bought these were people that were rich and wanted the luxury lifestyle but didn't want people to know that they were rich. They're the rich kids. Like, kids don't know that they're rich. They live in a big house, but, like, they don't have all these fancy toys and video games and stuff. And you move, go to your friend's house and you're like, dude, your parents have a lot of money. He's like, no, we don't. I don't have any cool stuff. Yeah. Well, that's because your parents are smart. They're got Roth IRA, they're investing, they're buying Volkswagen Phaetons. 
<laughs> well, okay, honestly. I guess I don't know if that's a smart yeah, investment. Yeah, but. see, now, I think eight to $10,000, if I was going to buy a car just because it's sick and I was going to drive it around, I would consider it. But imagine it's 2005. You just got your sick payouts with this new company, Enron. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. So you take your Enron dividends, then you buy a 2005 <laughs> Volkswagen Phaeton, and you're happy as a clam. You got the W12, you got every option, $95,000, just gone, just like that. And then three years down the road, we've already lost 50 grand in depreciation. <laughs> and then the recession hits. Oh. So you're three years into your $1,100 a month payments, and you still owe after your, uh, you know, interest rates and everything. You still owe 40 grand, but the car is worth 25 now. Oh. And then the recession hits. Now you're upside down. You're stuck with a Volkswagen Phaeton, and here you are, old man Jenkins, in 2020, with your outright owned Volkswagen Phaeton that you bought brand new for ninety five thousand dollars and is now worth less than ten grand. That'd be a little salty. Given that scenario, is it a smart buy? No. But under ten thousand dollars is a W twelve Phaeton a smart buy? Yes. I think so. I think it's a smart buy. <laughs> Somebody please buy this Phaeton. Oh here's kind of another thing we brushed over actually this car's from Canada. Originally. Oh yeah. If you pull out that uh there's like a the original Volkswagen little pocketbook little thing pocket is book. in French and it's got a Quebec address on it. Quebec, 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 Quebec. Got in it and we started driving down the road and I was like, we're already going 60 miles an hour, but the main speedometer on the outside ring is in kilometers an hour because it's from Canada. I'm assuming it's. I don't think they all came like that. I, I don't think. No, I don't think so. So we're we just kind of assume that this is a Canadian car. But the the current dealership that has this car said it came from Florida. So that's kind of the thing is like I made that whole gag about the recession and everything, but I really, really doubt anyone that bought a Phaeton brand new still has it. No. That seems like something they just they got rid of the second that they ever had the opportunity. You know, yeah. no, nobody Nobody that bought a Phaeton drove the crap out of their Phaeton. This one has 121,000 miles on it, so I imagine it's had a handful of owners. Interior-wise, this is pretty clean for, like, you know, a 15-year-old car that has 121,000 miles. That's kind of the thing about Phaetons. Is like I was telling you earlier, this Phaeton isn't perfect, but I feel like real, like, huge Volkswagen big-time enthusiast people or people that are like stuck in the, uh, I gotta buy luxury cars, but nice old ones. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a couple problems that people will have with this, cause like the heated mirrors look like they got a little heated, for lack <laughs> of a better word. They uh, kinda, you know, got some interesting tinting going on. There's a couple very minor cracks in the wood paneling on the dash. Uh, you know, there's some wear and tear, like rubbing marks on, things where people's hands have been and yada yada but the seats overall really good the headliner is still tight yeah i saw one of the door panels back there like the leather on the door panels is a little loosey-goosey this is a phaeton that someone like us is going to yeah. buy this is the phaeton you go look i know it's not perfect but i can't afford to buy one with twenty thousand miles on it and for eight thousand dollars to have a phaeton with a w12 I think just the stigma of having a W12, yeah. like a what, 12 cylinder car. What's the other, what's the other options? You got an A8L W12, which I found one for sale in California. I think it was $15,000 no yeah. live or a Bentley. Yeah. I don't I think mean, you can get a W12 or a V12 or anything else besides like, I don't um, even think the Viper, does a Viper has a V10. Viper has a V10, but right now in California, there's a 2003 750IL long wheel. V12 BMW for sale for three grand. Uh, oh, three grand. Three grand. That's well, what Sean had. And I drove that car and it's really cool, but I'm a big Volkswagen fanboy, so I'm going to say that this is cooler. W. It's better than V. I mean, yeah, I guess you'd have like BMW option. I don't think any Toyota, like, I know there was that hype for a little bit about the Toyota Crown, but we didn't get that in the States. Yeah, and Mercedes SL, maybe. Yeah. But. I mean, I just feel like despite 
the thing that I like about the Phaeton over at BMW is, yeah, you got a 750, of course, has a V12, of course, it's super luxurious and classy, you do the same thing with an S-Class or a Bentley or whatever, I think the thing that drags me to this car is that it's weird that it has all this super nice stuff because it's a Volkswagen. Yeah. I know it's a D1 platform car just like a Bentley, a lot of the stuff crosses over with Bentley. I think my biggest fear would be maintaining it. Oh yeah. And I know everybody always tries to play with, well, it's good and expensive to maintain, you don't want that. Listen, don't tell me what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've, I've owned three Audis, and you know, all sorts of Volkswagens. You don't have to tell me that there's certain little nitpicky nonsense parts that cost a bunch of money for no reason, that things can be finicky, old Volkswagen electronics are very questionable. We haven't opened the sunroof, and I absolutely refuse. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it, I won't be responsible for that. No. I'm sure it works, it's a fate and it's on a different level, but I'm not even gonna risk it. Um, here's the thing, Ross. We demonstrated in the opening sequence there the air ride suspension. Yes. You can adjust the ride height even while you're driving. I would like you to take a guess at how much it would cost to buy all four corners of OE air suspension from FCP Euro right now. Um, I don't know, maybe 3000 4,000. <laughs> I was going on the high end too. I yeah, was like, yeah, it's no. a Phaeton. It's going to be in the thousands. Like, we'll just go with a safe, like, two to three thousand dollars. Yeah, that's four thousand. That's four thousand dollars just for the parts. And actually, I've arranged a cool ask me anything segment that we can do. And while we're at it, I'll just pull up Phaeton on FCP Euro and sort by the most expensive parts. And we'll look. <laughs> I, what, what would you guess is the most expensive part on this car? Mm. Probably anything interior, like not anything interior wise, but like I was gonna say something goofy, like the electronic doors. Yeah, like or, or how like, this door, like the so when you turn the car off, the I don't know. Cover, yeah, yeah, the vents. There's a cover that comes down with like the wood, right? And it so it's all flush and that's hidden. And I don't know if maybe if you turn this all off, if it would close. You know what? Actually, I think I know what's going to be the most expensive. That. You just pointed at it. Oh, the... The infotainment center. Best of 2005 right here. Yeah, it's so crazy how quickly things get dated. Like, 2005, you had this, you'd be like, damn, look at this color screen. Everything's amazing. But, but now... It's like, it's not touch screen. Long-term statistics, here's a cool fact for you. This car's lifetime average fuel economy is 12.5 miles an hour. Average speed, 21 miles an hour. That's that's a fate owner for sure. Yeah. You have 120 owned. horsepower, zero to sixty in five and a half seconds, a five thousand pound car, and you're driving at twenty one miles all the time. Although I have to say our average mile an hour right now is fourteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of start and stop, but I, I always it feels weird to me to pick up cars to do stuff like this because I feel like when people talk to me on the phone and hear my voice, they expect like a forty year old. And then I get there and I have tattoos and I'm wearing a flat rim hat and people are just like so who do you work for again? Oh, that uh, I made it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna I, lie, that guy was heavily questioning. Uh, yeah, I, I don't blame him. Like if I was just like, hey, give me this car, please. Um, I promise I'm a writer. Would you trust me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't trust myself either. So, so I understand where people are coming from in that front. It is hilarious to me, though. But like, there's other things like this ashtray. Yeah, there's like, also two slow rolling out ashtrays like that on one on each back door as well, which is kind of crazy. I mean, stuff like that, or maybe like the soft closing doors, like that motor. Oh, yeah, something like that. The mechanism. Because on this car, the driver side does not work for soft close. Right. So, I imagine like that little motor that pulls it back in. Yeah. I'm at, like, not only would that be a pain in the butt to change. But I don't imagine that being cheap either. Like forty dollars, I imagine that's like a hundred and forty right. for like a little component. Maybe even more. Like for what it is, you know, you wouldn't think it's just be like that. something astronomically expensive for what you're actually getting. Yeah, or like what's I think on like in terms of like a Volvo, like most parts for that are super cheap, except the electronic antenna motor. Mm -hmm. It's like two hundred and forty dollars. Right. And it's just a little piece that you can go find at the junkyard and it probably works. And 
you know, but like you're not gonna find a phaeton in the junkyard. Yeah, never. So <laughs> like, I, I think I talked about it at the beginning of the video, but there's only 2,200 of them in North America, or the U.S. Maybe they only sold in 0406. They kept making phaetons, I think, till 2010 in the mm -hmm. European market, but nobody was buying them here, so they stopped in 2006. So 2,200 of these. I don't know how many are V8s versus W12s, but I'd imagine there's more V8s. You think they were bought with more V8s than? Yeah, I feel like this car was like a, I can't afford the Bentley, but I can get the super, super classy Volkswagen, but I can't get the one with the Bentley engine. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the Audi 4.2 V8. All right, guys, we've reached the new segment of this new type of video that I'm going to do. Reviews with Ross, I guess is what we can call it. Um, I asked you guys what you wanted to know about a W12 Phaeton, things we haven't covered yet. So, I asked on YouTube, but I did a little too late, and it's early in the morning, so you guys haven't gotten to it yet. Sorry, we'll learn from our mistakes. We'll do it early next time, the day before. Yeah. Um, so, I did ask in this Facebook group yesterday, though. So, the first one, is it comfy? My God, is it ever. Yes, <laughs> it's yes, so it is. sick. Very comfy. It's really, really nice. I would take this through a McDonald's drive through with ease. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Why do you own it, LOL? Such a PETA to work on, even if they are cool. This is the kind of person that we don't associate with. <laughs> First of all, I don't own it. And I commented that, and he's like, I mean the guy who does own it. I was like, well, it's a dealership, so they probably would like to make money off of it, yeah. if I had to take a guess. Um, but why would you own a Phaeton, I guess, is a better form of that question. And because it's cool. Even if they're cool is not a reason. There's such a pain in the ass to work on. First of all, if I had a fate, I would probably never work on it. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't either. If uh, I was going this deep, I'm paying someone else to do it for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just, you either have that gene or you don't. You're the type of person that wants a Lincoln Town Car limousine or you aren't. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Because, like, there's a lot of crossovers with people <laughs> like us. Weird sometimes expensive to maintain cars i love audi i love volkswagen i want a porsche really bad like it's just what it is what it is you can take your second gen camry and drive it <laughs> off a cliff <laughs> probably still run if you did that yeah, obviously. <laughs> what does volks or sorry <laughs> what does vw stand for very welcome oh because right. you're more than welcome to hit this massage button oh i know i got this one going i'm like just, yeah you know just cooking <laughs> How big is its pee pee? It's big. Uh, Maybe not, actually. Is that the flashlight? This, it's this flashlight. Dude, it's so crazy. It doesn't oh, it's work. it's got the VW logo on it. It doesn't work unless you got it plugged in, because the battery or whatever that is doesn't work too good. I see. For how many ashtrays this car has, it has no cigarette lighter. Yeah, it seems to not have a cigarette lighter, which is a little bit bizarre. Is it fast? Actually, not bad. <laughs> For a car that weighs, let's look how much this thing weighs. I was pleasantly surprised of how quick it wanted to go. 5,400 pounds. That's more than my Sierra That is truck. insane. <laughs> so yeah, uh, 5,400 pounds, zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. When you put your foot down, it's, you know, you get pushed into the seat and it sounds so good. It does. I wish... If I bought one of these, the first thing I would do is take that exhaust off. Oh, yeah. We'd run straight pipes, keep the twin tips because they look sick, but just let her roar, dude. It'd be so sick. People right. would probably crap themselves. <laughs> my wife to let me see the kids at least one extra day a week i mean it's pretty baller there's a chance if you present her with this phaeton you're like look honey i'm being responsible it's all i got a luxury car that's big enough for the kids yeah so we 20. can go to the big water park for, yeah. or whatever you're doing <laughs> the water park <laughs> i'll take them to the playground yeah i don't know how long has it spent its life in a shop? I don't know, but it does have 121,000 miles on it, so it's pretty safe to assume it's probably got work done. Oh, yeah. Does it do fat skids? I'm not about to find uh, out. <laughs> this is not a press car. See, 
when we borrow cars from people to do reviews, when they're personal cars or dealerships, we're nice to them. Yes. But if it's a press car, they basically tell you to go destroy those things. So. Yeah. How quick does a cigarette lighter warm up? Uh, I don't think it has one. To yeah, be honest I, with you. I'm not seeing one. It's got a 12 volt and this little flashlight. Oh goes God, into terrible! It. That thing's probably eight thousand dollars. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I don't see a cigarette lighter in here. Probably because it doesn't have one, or something. Long story short, okay, I don't know. Uh, I said, what do you want to know? And this guy decided to wrap up my whole video. You've been watching this for 20 however long minutes. This guy's got you for you. Long story short, in 2005, VW made a limo which had options that even the S-Class Mercedes lacked. It was 2004, so strike one, idiot. <laughs> Ford's price the W12 Phaeton is one heck of a luxury car that you don't see every day on the road. Long story shorter, a luxury Passat. <laughs> We've made True. that joke plenty today. Yep. All right. Uh, quirks and features. Here's the link to the Doug DeMiro video. Do the hideaway vents work? They do, and I love them. Yeah, that's actually really cool. I sit there and just twist the ignition all the time <laughs> if I had it. I guess you can just turn it off and it'll, uh, everything. I'm glad you got this far, Dan Diaz, because so far everything is what you got. All right, now it's time, Ross. Take, take a guess again. My guess is that infotainment center is the most expensive part that they have on FCP Euro for this car. Um. What did I say before? Like the little door closers? Like mm -hmm. the soft closed door closers? I'm, I'm, gonna say I'm talking that. most expensive though. Not like oh. price versus how ridiculously small it is. Oh. I'm saying most Suspension. expensive. Suspension. It has to be. That's probably a good guess. Suspension. Because we said it was 4000 Shout out to our friends over at FCPEuro.com. Yep. They got your parts for this bad boy. We're going high to low. Now that's an interesting one. Uh oh. Steering rack assembly. Really? I guess it is all wheel drive. How much is that bad boy? $1,159 <laughs> for just the rack. <laughs> <laughs> Bentley parts. Wow, that's nuts. Okay. Um. Suspension $1,040 per front and $960 or $951 per rear. Control arm kits, 962. Ooh, yeah, the self-leveling control module. Take a stab on that price. Mm. Well, since the suspension was almost a grand per corner, uh, I'd say 1,500 bucks. 939. Hmm? Pretty reasonable. <laughs> in, in relation to what I thought it was gonna cost. The, $939? For the control module, yeah. The compressor is $614. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's the crossover. Phaeton, comma, Continental. Bentley. <laughs> Cooling fan motors back ordered. Audi engine, or VW Audi engine timing camshaft sprocket. Phaeton. The A8 quadrant of the Phaeton for the W12. The sprocket is $819. Like, the thing that got, connects to the cam? I guess so. The, there's gotta be something wrong. What else we way. got? There's a lot of stuff on here that's not even in stock. Okay, <laughs> remember how we were talking about how big those uh, calipers were up front? Take a guess how much one of those is. For one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like... 200 bucks. $487. <laughs> From one caliper? Yeah, we're going aftermarket on that. Yeah. I don't like that. The fuel pump. The fuel pump? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't know. Like, 100 bucks? $453. What? Why? <laughs> Is this some sort of magical pump that's a like... a genuine VW Audi pump, but oh my god, dude. Um, you might as well just get yourself one of those Hell Kitty motors, or <laughs> Hell Kitty fuel pumps. It'll be more than what this engine requires. I bet H you it'd probably drop right in. HVAC blower motor, $405. Wow. AC compressor, $450. Let's see... 
ABS wheel speed sensor out of stock, out of stock. Uh, the rear calipers are only three hundred sixty-four dollars per side, or yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> they don't come as a kit. No. Nope. Oh man. Uh, an OBD two scanner. Um. Let's see if we can do brand and sort it by genuine. Yeah, sort it by genuine Volvo, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I gotta say, I want one a little less now. <laughs> Four hundred fifty dollar fuel pump. <laughs> Jeez, why? I can't even imagine. I bet you have to have the special tool like you did for Audis to get it out. The vapor canister. Oh my God! The crossover for Phaeton R eight. <laughs> oh. Three hundred eighty five dollars. Oh, for a piece of plastic. Fuel tank sending unit. Three eighty two. Control arm. One front lower control arm. $367.50. Uh, neutral safety. <laughs> the neutral safety switch for us. Okay. <laughs> $354. Oh <my> <laughs> Why? Uh, oh my god. This is nuts. Window regulators, 333. Good lord. <laughs> um, I want to know what the soft close motor is, if they even got that. I bet you they don't. They're just like, yeah, if it's broke, you don't fix it. It's just. <laughs> You're screwed. Just, uh, Sorry. It just works like a normal door. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now you have a facade door, you broke ass. <laughs> Uh, transmission control unit 256 getting cheaper ooh RS6 S8 a quattro crossover there mm -hmm. nice Phaeton only positive battery cable back ordered I don't really want to know to be honest with you CV axles $293 a piece it's a lot more expensive than the $50 Honda CV oh, right, axle right. my god well The O2 sensor, Ross. It's 243 bucks. What? <laughs> and there's only one of them. What? There's got to be like four on here, too. Yeah, it said cylinders seven through nine on that. So. <laughs> what do you mean seven through nine? How many headers this thing got? I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was another question somebody asked. Was, does it look like it's difficult to change the spark plugs? And the answer is, hell yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. You can't see anything. And I'm not going to start taking it apart to see where stuff is. Again, not my car. And not a press car. No. I uh, think that about uh, does it, Ross. Yeah, uh, I have to say, even after finding out that the fuel pump is $454, I still want it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sick. Dude, I imagine you'd have to drop the tank. And then... Once you get it out, there's like five million sensors and vacuum lines going to it. Oh yeah. And then you gotta like, and then you probably have to have that special tool to get it out. Yeah, the little claw thing. All right guys, I think that's gonna do it. 2005 Volkswagen Phaeton, final thoughts for us. Uh, really expensive probably to maintain or own, but it would be a really cool car Gosh. to just drive. Dude, I would road trip the hell out of this Dude, thing. Dude, I Even mean. Even though that's a question, we'll call it best. Yeah. I but would, I would love to have one of these. I I would drive one. I won't say I would own one, but I would drive one and enjoy the living crap out of it. And I have good news if you uh, might want to buy one of these. You can buy this one from Marvelous Motors in Garden City. Once again, thank you guys for uh, letting us borrow this car, shoot this video. Uh, we're going to put some more gas in it for you. He gave us gas money, too. Yeah. Like, what a legend. Did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to run this thing back, um, make sure we didn't... I mean, we didn't have anything in here to make a mess with, but, uh, you know. We'll make sure there's nothing If you borrow it. a car, be nice and return it as nice as you got it. Or better. Yeah. But uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Add me on Snapchat at BigB1011. Follow Ross on Instagram at we got Ross. And uh, if you want to see a picture of your car feature at the end of one of my videos, send a picture of it to me at cursedforeverhelp at gmail.com. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Yes,